Welcome back, Devils fans. It is your host, Ace, here on Running With The Devils, where we are talking New Jersey Devils hockey all year long. Rumors, speculations, thoughts, ramblings, everything Devils hockey. We're talking it here all year long. Please hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, share with a friend. Thank you very much. And we are off to the topic at hand today. The title of this video is Sandpaper Summer. And the New Jersey Devils are desperately in need of grit, tenacity, a.k.a. sandpaper. And just to clarify for some of you that might be confused, sandpaper is not necessarily getting tough guys like Curtis McDermott and Tom Wilson and Ryan Reeves of the world. While they certainly would be classified as sandpaper, um, that's not what we're talking about in, in the grand scheme of the New Jersey Devils. We, we already have that taken care of with McDermott. So people aren't saying to go out there and get more enforcer types. Sandpaper guys are simply guys that are difficult to play against, play a physical game, wear down the other team, and just and just make lives hell for the opposition. Those are the types of guys we need to inject in the lineup. And Tom Fitzgerald needs to have a sandpaper summer. Fitzy made a quote just yesterday that gives me some hope. I will get to that in a little bit. But he, he had some words that really made me, you know, made me feel that he's finally understanding what I and plenty of others have been saying for years now, and it's that the New Jersey Devils have just been entirely too soft and easy for teams to play against. That is the reality. The Devils have lacked any type of sandpaper for the majority of the past several seasons, and it's shown on the ice. There's countless incidents of players getting battered, smacked around with with nothing happening, and when our fast-paced transition game isn't working on any given night, a lot of the times, we just kind of shrivel up and die. When teams shut us down effectively and start beating on us, we wilt. And that, to me, is part part of the reason is the function of not having these sandpaper guys. And if you look across the league and league history, I'll even start with the Devils Championship teams. You know, there was sandpaper guys on every roster up and down the lineup. Obviously, on defense, for all those Devils dynasty years, we had Scott Stevens, Kenny Danico, um, even guys like Colin White. We had plenty of guys on the blue line that were kind of scrappy. We still don't have any of those. But in terms of the forwards, in 1995, we had a line called The Crash Line. For young kids that don't know what I'm talking about, do your research, look up clips. The Crash Line was comprised of Mike Peluso, Bobby Holy, Randy McKay, one of the greatest lines in Devils history. Completely tough guys that could do a little bit of everything, and the other teams must have just been shitting themselves when these guys were out there. But then we had other guys that weren't quite as physical, but I'd still classify as sandpaper, the guys like the Claude Lemuse of the world. You know, you need these guys to win. And if you look at even the Panthers and Oilers, each of those teams have several guys, you know, some names that come to mind. You know, Matthew Kachuk, total sandpaper guy. He's a freak, one of my favorite players in the entire league that's a non-devil. Sandpaper player for sure. You have uh, Bennett. You know, the Oilers have Kane, some other guys. Every team pretty much in the history of hockey that has gone on to win a Stanley Cup has at least a few of these guys in their lineup, and it's a necessary element to go on deep playoff runs. And if you don't believe that, then I don't know what to tell you. There is a faction of newer age fans, I think it's mostly newer age fans anyway, that don't believe physicality in hockey is a real thing. I mean, it's mind-blowing to me. It really is. But for some reason, this crowd is obsessed with the analytics and the stats, and they don't believe there are intangibles and things that you might not be able to measure on your fancy charts and graphs that matter to a team. And a lot of times the sandpaper guys in the lineup, they are the heart and soul guys. They're the guys you want to go to war with in a foxhole. We don't have any of them right now, and we desperately need them. I've been saying this for years. Again, I'm an old-school guy, so most of my viewpoints and thoughts are formed on what I grew up watching you know, in the 90s and early 2000s, and you can't argue with this sort of track record. I saw the Dynasty Devils. I saw how they were built. And while we were an offensive juggernaut for a couple of years, like in 2000, 2001, we were scoring goals like crazy and were an offensive juggernaut, we still played a tough, gritty game that teams did not like, that other teams simply did not like, and you need these guys to make it happen. And so a couple weeks ago... Tom Fitzgerald made a quote to Pierre Lebrun while talking to him at the 2024 NHL Draft Scouting Combine, and Lebrun, I guess, talked to Fitzy for a few minutes, and the most telling quote of this whole exchange to me was, we're a little too vanilla up front, plain and simple. We are too vanilla up front, meaning 
we need a little more of that that element of the nasty, gritty, physical sandpaper players. We don't have them, and if you believe we do, you're crazy. I mean, McDermott, again, is a sandpaper guy, but he's more of an enforcer, so that by default is a sandpaper player. But I would say Curtis Lazar. Curtis Lazar be- quickly became one of my favorite players last season because the guy plays balls out every night, and he is a sandpaper guy, and he seems like a great guy off the ice as well, but he's blocking shots, hitting people, scored some timely goals. You need more guys like that, and right now, honestly, Curtis Lazar is probably the only one that comes to mind for me when I say, you know, true sandpaper player, and just one of these guys is not going to get it done. And I'd like to see some guys that have this flair to them, you know, in the top nine. It can't just be your fourth-line guys. You need a couple of them sprinkled, you know, in the top three lines as well, and hopefully Tom Fitzgerald goes out in free agency and addresses this because there's plenty of sandpaper for sale. In free agency this summer, 2024, sandpaper is for sale all over, and we need to be in on these guys. We need to be in on these guys, and now getting to the quote, the newest quote from Tfitzy, when talking with the guys on Overdrive on TSN, he had a lot to say. I'll put the link to that video in the description so you can check out the whole thing. He was on the phone with them for a little bit, you know, maybe seven, eight minutes. I don't know what it is. But to me, the most telling part of his appearance on the show was at the end, Oh, and it was music to my ears. Fitz there at the end said he wanted to get a little heavier, get a little edgier, get a little more violent. A little more violent. Let's go. Let's go. Not that I, you know, need to see the violence, but and he was, it was a little bit of tongue, tongue in cheek there. But clearly, get heavier, edgier, and more violent means bring in tougher players, period. The end. We have a lot of speed, finesse, soft skill guys, and that's great. You need those guys to win as well. But sending them out there into the warfare of an NHL season and the absolutely increased level of warfare in a playoff, without these guys, you're not going to get it done. And so go look at the free agency list. Again, in probably about a week or so, my video will be coming out with a full shopping wish list of all the different – there's so many guys that I would love to have on this team available in free agency. And so if we just get a few of them, I think it'll be a really good summer. But you need these guys to win. And they're out there, and they're available for sale. Getting some of these guys in free agency will go a long way, I think, both on the ice and just the overall morale of the group. You know, you saw how a lot of the guys in the locker room responded to Curtis McDermott, and a lot of guys, you know, felt safer that he was around, and they just kind of like his presence. I think the same thing can be said for these sandpaper guys, and it hopefully goes to change the DNA of this team a little bit because, quite frankly, there was some sad displays of softness and just kind of rolling over and dying during last season, and it can't happen again. And I think with a couple of these guys up front in the forward group and a couple on defense, when you weave that sandpaper into the lineup, you could really change the DNA of a team. You really can, and I think it's infectious. And so I'm looking for Fitz to now back up his words because he's saying all the right things. He's saying all the right things, and he's saying what music to my ears. Love to hear what he's saying. Saying and doing are two different things, and now he needs to go get it done. And I have faith that he will because there are no shortage of these guys in free agency. So we just kind of keep a watch on it. Free agency opens up in a little over a week. We still have that number 10 pick. We're now less than a week away from the draft. Is he going to hold on to it and draft a player with it? Are we going to try to make some sort of big splash by moving it? I've talked about that in previous videos. Go check out some of the more recent videos on the channel. You'll kind of get an idea of where my head's at with a few different things. But videos are going to be coming out nonstop. Less than a week away from the draft, still have the number 10. A lot of you have talked about trading the number 10 for a defenseman, and you know I'll repeat myself here again. Because of the amount of defensemen that are available in free agency, I personally would not have any interest in trading that number 10 pick to get a defenseman. Unless, you know, the asterisk, I guess, to that is in some unique circumstance where maybe we are shipping out Siegenthaler to kind of get rid of that contract and then maybe with a pick or something else come the other way. But in a vacuum, I don't want to trade the pick for a defenseman, but if it's helping us in other areas, it gets complicated. I, I could come around to it. And especially if it's moving out a bad ca- a contract, that would be hard to move out elsewhere to improve the overall roster. So it's very interesting. Um, kind of seems like a 50-50 right now what Fitz is going to do with that pick. But a couple days after the draft, free agency opens, and I hope he is active and – cutting checks because they're the sandpaper is for sale and we must be first in line or at least 
you know, towards the front of the line for a lot of these guys with a big fat check because we need these guys. We desperately do. And I think if he goes out and does what he says he's going to do and backs up this talk, we might see a vastly improved club on the ice in the 24-25 season. But he's got he's got to back up the talk. I can't stress that enough. Saying all the right things is great, but doing all the right things is what really needs to happen. Talk is cheap, mother... For all, anyone knows old school DMX, I'm aging myself here. But talk is cheap. Talk is cheap, and he's been doing plenty of it, flapping the gums to all these outlets, and we've seen it before. And so... I hope that he just backs it up because he's talked a lot and it's been it's been quality stuff. That quote about getting heavier, edgier, and more violent, I mean, God, you guys know me. I'm a Neanderthal. I love the tough stuff. Love it. And I don't just love it for the sake of loving it. I love it because it has been proven to be a necessary element to win. I'm sorry, analytics nerds, that you don't want to hear that. You need at least a few tough guys. And again, no one's saying to go get enforcers and fighters no that's not what we're talking about we're talking about you know maybe some guys like Tyler Bertuzzi Duclair everyone knows these power forwards that have snarl we don't have them right now and we need them let's go buy them go spend that money make it rain in free agency fits please please I'm excited for the offseason guys you know this is going to be my most anticipated season in quite a while just because now we go big game hunting we get Markstrom and hopefully the big game hunt continues that number 10 pick is really a wild card to see what happens with that. But let me know what you guys think in the comments about the whole concept of adding the sandpaper. What do you think of all these quotes from Fitzy? Anything else? Obviously, we're watching a crazy cup final unfold before us. Gonna be, Game 7 is just going to be absolutely electric. Huge for the sport of hockey. Hopefully, they continue to grow the game because, you know, we, we always need more fans. Need to keep growing that sport. But we'll see how it all plays out. I'll be back soon with some other stuff. I got lots rumbling, rumbling and tumbling in the brain. I will talk to you all soon. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz. Until next time, friends, let's go Devils.